Chris, what did you think about the way uh, DeAndre handled that, that hack of DJ that obviously the tornado attempts in the first half? Uh, great, <clears throat> great. Uh, Doc kept telling us, and we told DJ, uh, this ain't the first time we've seen it. Uh, and, and I just kept telling him to embrace it. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, he went to the line. Uh, you know, he made a few, and it was huge. What do you think it says about your offense that three minutes and 40 seconds into a game that they feel they needed to start intentionally fouling? Was it that something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It is what it is. It's part of the game. Uh, you know, people be talking about should they ban it, whatever. No, it's part of the game. Does it give you confidence? Though? I mean, not that you guys need it, but even more confidence your offense and, and kind of what they think about their chances of stopping it? Uh, I guess if you think about it, you think about all that during the game. You're just thinking about uh, we got to defend, you know, because that's one of the biggest things. Because um, you know they're foul, and, and we just got to make sure that we we play deep defense. Chris, the Clippers have a chance to move on to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in franchise history on Tuesday. What does that mean to you guys as a team? Um, it means that us as a team have. An opportunity to, to win. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's about us, not about the focus franchise. And all this. It's about us in that locker room. We just got to go out there and play. Chris, I'm, I'm just from a personal level. How much does it help you in terms of what you're dealing with your legs to be able to slow the game down the way they did, so you're not running up and down for down the court? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure they're not fouling <laughs> to. Make sure my hand frame feels good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, if so, I appreciate it. I guess I don't know. Uh, I'm feeling better. Uh, I think that's all that matters, and um, we just gotta stay hungry for the game too. Chris, can you speak to the confidence you guys are playing with right now? You, you these last two games were kind of close at the half, and you pulled away. And it just seems that there's a confidence or swagger about this team right now. Uh, I think our confidence comes when we defend. You know, everybody talks about how many points we can score and all that different type of stuff. But the biggest thing Doc said at halftime was, you know, we had 60 points, but we were only up six, and it was because of our defense. The reason we played so well in the third quarter is because we defended and we got a chance to get out of transition. You know, everything for us, believe it or not, begins and ends on the defensive end. Chris, when you guys look at a close out game like on Tuesday, is that something you're looking forward to as far as it's an opportunity for you to get rest and kind of, you know, get your hamstring and get, get ready for the next series? No question. No question. We, we think about it, too, is just the closeout game. You know, we got to go there, be hungry. Um, and, you know, in this situation, you can't give teams confidence. You can't give them life. And uh, we, made it, we know they're going to come out ready to play game five. And we, we got to stay the hungry team. Uh, Chris, uh, over here. Right here. Uh, talk about the confidence level. I'm talking about confidence. The confidence level of uh, Austin and um, how he's playing right now. Yeah, uh, Austin, uh, man, it's great to see him playing with that confidence. Uh, you know, at times he uh, second guesses himself, and I think right now he's just playing with a lot of confidence. And we need that. Uh, He's coming off being a big spark to our team, and not only on the offensive end, the defensive end. You know, he's playing both ways, and we're, we're going to need him to continue to do that. Chris, to have Austin be a credible scoring threat, how much easier does that make it on Jamal with the second unit? I, I think it makes it a lot easier on Jamal. And, uh, you know, with our first unit and our second unit, it's all about ball movement. You know, Doc always tells us, don't let the ball stick. You know, make it move, let it move. And the, the ball will find the open man, and I think that's what we're all doing. Uh, DJ, uh, what was your oh, we're to you, right? what were your thoughts on being fouled twenty or taking twenty eight free throw shots in the first half and just that whole they started it so early? Um, uh, I didn't really know how many I was shooting. Uh, I was just trying to make as many as I could for our team, and, and on the other end, just try to get us as many stops as I could in a row. Um, you know, but in that stretch, they scored a little bit, but uh, we were able to get stops and kind of cut their lead a little bit in the first quarter. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Nancy. laughs> Thanks, Chris. Hi, right, DJ. Um, 
In all three victories, you guys have really kind of blown the game open in the third quarter. What What is Doc saying to you guys? What are you saying to each other? How have you been able to kind of take that third quarter to him and build a big lead? I think it's just being able to uh, <clears throat> pick up our defensive intensity. Um, every time that we've gotten the lead and went on the run, we were able to get stops and limit those guys to one shot and uh, get on the run and do what we want to do and we were able to convert. So. Uh, Chris was asked a second ago about um, being one game away from uh, making the Clippers history and going to the conference finals. He said it's not about Clippers history, it's just about the, the guys in the locker room. But a year ago, the guys in the locker room had, had a whole different feeling. You guys were bouncing the playoffs, you had all kinds of instability. To be where you were then, to have this opportunity now, what does it say about your team? Um, it's a great opportunity, uh, but that's not what our ultimate goal is. That's not what we want to achieve, it's just making it too late. Uh, Conference finals. We want to uh, be able to win mm -hmm. nine more games. Hey Blake. <laughs> yeah. when, when your team is beating other playoff teams by 20 and 30 <clears throat> points, is there a sense of you're unstoppable at this point? No, I mean it's just it's a good win. I mean, uh, in the first half, you know, we, we we didn't play that well. We had we had we were sloppy on defense. Um, we scored 60 points and we were only up by six at halftime. So um, the best part about today's game was how we responded after the half came out. Um, you know, they did such a great job of defending and getting out and getting the buckets. Yeah, after they started potentially fouling you uh, <clears throat> three minutes and 40 seconds into the game, what was your thought at that at that point? No, <laughs> <laughs> <It was>, uh... <laughs> answer the question, man. You can't just get up. Um, I just tried to stay focused. <laughs> we, we executed. <laughs> Situation, maybe not three minutes and forty seconds, but for teams with fouling, is that a skill to be able to kind of weather that and still find rhythm? And like you said, I mean, you guys still scored sixty points despite the stops and starts of the first half. Um, it's it's a good thing um, to be able to weather that. I mean, you know, it just slows the game down so much. Um, anybody shoot twenty eight free throws in the first half? I mean, that's crazy. Like I, I never I never witnessed that. Or, Experienced that, so um, for us to just kind of maintain the composure, you know, he hit shots, he hit some free throws, uh, we, just, we got stops, we just we just grinded it out, you know. What I mean, I think that's a little demoralizing to me. Up at the six at halftime, um, and the team could be you know putting somebody on the line six, 28 times in the half. I mean, it, it's a, it's a good sign for us. Like going back to last year to this year, how, how have you improved through this postseason? What did you learn from last postseason, which obviously have ended without the goal? Or changing? Or changing. You, you and division. division. Um, you know, it's just, uh, I think every year you just kind of learn a little bit more. And every year I, I, you kind of figure something new out. You, you understand the highs and the lows of the, the playoffs. I think that's the biggest thing for me is like, you know, you can't just can't get too high with the highs and too low with the lows. I mean, the thing that I thought was, was most impressive about this team is, is after we won game three, you know, we were saying to ourselves and um, even our coaches and our players even said it before, our coaches said it, like we were in the same position against San Antonio. And, you know, we, we came out, we went wanted to make a statement game four, being the room team, and, and we didn't allow that to happen. You know, we, we locked in and, you know, did our job. And I think that showed us how excited about just winning game three, but to be three and get both games out. Blake, you've been through a lot of highs and lows with the Clippers. On Tuesday, you guys have a chance to move on to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in franchise history. What does that mean for the team? Um, it's, it's an accomplishment, but it's not, it's not like a, our goal. I mean, it, it is a goal on the, on the, on the way to uh, the bigger goal, the biggest goal. Uh, so, I don't know, we're not really like, it's not like a thing where we're like, oh, wow, we did this. You know, it's Clippers history. You know, that's not, it's not really our thing. It's an accomplishment, but um, it's not, it's not our final, final place where we want to be. So, um, you know, we need to take care of business and, and 
do what we have to do, but you know, we can't rest on that. Like you're no stranger to hard fouls, obviously, in your career, but it seems like in this series they're making a point to, to hit you hard, rough with Terrence and Dwight tonight. And every time you're just walking away, keeping your cool, not letting you get, it, get into you. Earlier in your career, you might have. How are you able to kind of keep your emotions in check? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, my entire career, everybody says I, I, I need to punch somebody. <laughs> um, never have. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the playoffs are going to be different. Different, not going to um, do something like that. Hard fouls are part of, part of playoff basketball. And that's. I think that's how basketball should be. Um, you know, I don't take those fouls personally. Uh, my job is to go, you know, hit some free throws. So um, we have to keep in mind you know, what the bigger picture is. Um, you know, it's ultimately winning. Mike, what does it say about DeAndre that he can take all those fouls and then come out in that third quarter? He had like 14 points, eight rebounds. Uh, in that spurt where you guys went ahead. What does it say about a guy to keep his composure when they're coming after him that way? It was huge, um, but we don't give him any choice, to be honest. I mean, he, we tell him every day, every game, and he, and him going to the free throw line, missing some free throws, is, his, his impact on the game goes way beyond missing free throws, and missing some free throws. I mean, um, he could have missed all those free throws tonight. As far as we were concerned, we'd still be in that game. We'd still have a chance to win that game. So uh, we tell him that, you know, I said, you know, time. Look, look at everything that happened. Look at all the things they did to, to slow the game down and, and we're up by six. That was, that was our message at halftime, and that was my message to him. Um, we, don't, we don't really give ourselves any choice but to just keep going, and that's, that's the thing that I think is awesome about this team. Mike, back here. Uh, it's already been a fairly physical series to this point with a uh, closeout game looming on Tuesday. What are you expecting from them? Uh, I expect a good fight. I expect a, an intense game. Their crowd is going to be great. They're going to be ready. They're going to be um, up for the game, especially playing at home. But we just have to do a good job and uh, come in focused, weather the storm. Um, you know, we've been down at their place early by 11 13, 11 in the first game, and we came back and won 13 in the second game and, and got the lead. Um, so we just need to do a, a good job, stay, you know, stay with our principles and, and stay with our, our formula and um, you know, just execute. Hey, like, since that game seven win over the Spurs, it seems like you and the team, but just the team, is playing with a new confidence or a swagger. What did that series going through all that teach this team? Uh, I think it kind of just gives you a, a sense of being a little battle tested. You know, when you play a team like the Spurs uh, in the first round and, and come out like that, um, you know, kind of gives you that feeling of. of Accomplishment to the to the to the point of like being down you know, two one early on the road, winning two games at their place. Uh, it just kind of gives you confidence to the team, but really the whole season has led up to this point. You know, I think we we realize as a team what we're capable of when we play the right way. Um, it's just a matter of coming out and the right way. So like throughout the year, the bench was kind of up and down, but it seems like they've kind of found a rhythm here a little bit. How big of those contributions went from those guys? And I mean, I think you outscored their bench tonight. I think almost two to one. I think getting Austin as a second score. How important has that been to, to kind of your success here in this team? Well, that was huge. And Austin, Austin, huge. Uh, but not just Austin. Obviously, always Jamal. Jamal always brings a, a punch for us. Uh, Spencer, the last two games, played great minutes. Big babies played huge minutes in the Spurs series and, and this series. I know he's a little. little uh, Banged up, but he's you know he's when he's out there he changed the game with his energy and his presence. Um, so it's it's great to see guys I mean, just kind of getting outside of themselves and, and just saying you know I'm just going to do whatever whatever it takes. And, uh, it's it's really it's really shown. You know, even games like even if the bench doesn't come in and outscores them by you know, two to one, it's uh, you know their presence and their uh, their their spirit on defense. Thanks, guys.